Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator and sunscreen fanatic. And today we are talking about a very highly requested brand on this channel, a European based sunscreen that is touting super high UVA and SPF protection, water resistant, sweat resistant, alcohol fragrance, and essential oil free, and all that for really affordable prices. Each individual sunscreen we're going to talk about today is no more than five, six, maybe even seven pounds, and that is Altruist. It's a brand I've gotten a lot of requests for, but having been based in the US, it's not the easiest to get your hands on but being based here in the UK super easy super cheap super affordable and super great quality breaking down some of the info about the brand I know it is dermatologist designed to some capacity it's like a derm and a skin surgeon who dealt with a lot of skin cancer surgeries came together and they were like we want a high protection sunscreen that's going to help combat cancer causing UV damage to the skin as best as possible but make it really affordable but I'm super excited to try these out just because again super highly requested I have had a very interesting experience trying these out these are all designated for sensitive skin types these are all vegan cruelty free and again fragrance and alcohol free as well because these are EU based sunscreens they get to feature some of the more fun innovative filters primarily some of the hybrid filters the chemical sunscreen filters that act a little bit more like mineral filters and how they work and how they function and because of that I needed to no. Are these brands skin friendly? But if so, to what degree? And therefore, I needed another reference of application. Therefore, I got my friend Danielle Gray, aka Style and Beauty Doctor, here on YouTube to try these out, show me some application footage, as well as give me some of her thoughts. And I'll be featuring these as I talk about each individual one. So huge shout out to Danielle. And I do believe she did a review for these on her channel as well. So I'll have that linked in the description box as well. For the application footage you're going to see on screen for me, I take a quarter teaspoon of each sunscreen and apply that to my face, my ears, and my neck. Work it in and let it sit down for at least five minutes before going on top of it with makeup and because these are all chemical sunscreens I do reapply these on top of the makeup to see how nicely they reapply on makeup if at all as well as to see if any cast is exacerbated with reapplication starting off with the OG options first one I have up here is their SPF 30 this is the one in the big tube specifically this one has 200 mil so you're getting a lot of product in this this one is five star UVA protection using the boot star system specifically with a PPD of 39 so really good UVA protection this retails for four pound fifty so very affordable in terms of the formulation for these these are very simple sunscreens no lots going on but what really is the magic is the filters because you're getting really great protection this one specifically has octosalate avobenzone octocrylene and silazole nano titanium dioxide and nano tinosorb a2b one of those hybrid filters that is a chemical but it's an insoluble particle that's suspended in the formulation and acts a lot more like a mineral filter on my skin you can see for the application footage i put it on bare skin it goes on white but it works in very quickly and when i do these side by side where you see no sunscreen and sunscreen don't see a difference if anything it's just a very radiant finish it's more moisturizing without being too emollient and greasy after that I do the full face and it sits really nicely on the skin just aside from the radiance it's not again too emollient not too much of a texture but it's still very moisturizing I like the way it looks and feels on the skin and in terms of facial hair not a lot of issue in my opinion makeup applies nicely on top of this because it does prep the skin nicely for makeup and then because this was a chemical sunscreen I thought how does it reapply and I think out of all of the Ultra sunscreen. This one is very in the middle. It's a little bit of a richer texture and it is very moisturizing, so that leaves a very radiant finish on makeup. But I don't think any of the filters really cause much of a cast when it comes to reapplication. So overall, this was very mid tier. Not a great experience, but not a horrible experience at all. I do enjoy the wearability of this considering it is waterproof and sweat resistant. So this might be something I reach more in the summer if I need more moisturization. I'm not entirely sure yet. Considering this is more lower SPF protection, to me, this is very much a daily wear sunscreen. This is more richly moisturizing, in my opinion, without being greasy again. So I recommend this more for normal dry skin types if you have oily skin you can definitely make this work you just have to make it work so overall i think this was a really great experience but let me see what danielle has to say the spf 30 was extremely creamy which i don't mind for my body my body skin is drier and my facial skin is oily it, it's a texture thing for me so while i tried the 30 on my face i didn't love it because i felt that it was too creamy i wouldn't say that it's greasy per se but it's just it's just like the texture just felt like a little much for my skin i definitely preferred it more on my body it did take some time to rub it in this is something that you know you're gonna have to take your time in the morning i did notice that the cast particularly on areas where my skin is darker and thicker like on my knees and my elbows it did take a little bit more time to kind of rub that in because i did notice that the cast was kind of like just sticking around right there on my knees and my elbows but you know not a bad option at all and like you can't beat the price and the amount of product that you get with the 30. and then next i have their SPF 50 and first of all I just want you to notice the difference in size between these two 
The 30 is 200 mil, the 50 is 100 mil. The 50 is a little bit cheaper. It's only four pounds, but again, you have the size difference to consider. SPF 50, still with five star UVA protection with a UVA PF of 54, so much higher than the SPF 30. In terms of the SPF filters to get it to that protection level, it has octocrylene, avobenzone, octosalate, nano titanium dioxide, and sulazol, nano tinosorb A2B, juvenile T150, then you also have tinosorb S. You have a very good combination of filters in there to get it to that protection. And the funny thing behind this is that I don't notice a lot of a texture difference between the 30 and the 50. If anything with application, I find that this one is just a little bit more elegant to me. I feel like I have to work a little bit less to get into my skin. It sits roughly the same in terms of radiance, but again, it's not greasy. It's not too emollient. It is nicely moisturizing. So as an early skin individual, this is my moisturizer. With makeup application, same thing with this. There's no white cast, as you can see with the half face application. Makeup applies really nicely on top of this. In terms of reapplication over makeup, I mentioned that the 30 wasn't bad. It wasn't my favorite. This performed a little bit worse in the 30, because again, it's just a matter of, I, there's probably a higher concentration of those hybrid filters in here. Those on top of makeup just don't look great and it just wasn't the best as reapplication and with the few ways that I tried it just didn't look well together you had the radiance compounded on top of that which whenever I reapply a really radiant sunscreen on top of a foundation it just looks very very dewy can you fix it yes definitely for sure you might have to go in with some foundation powder just some loose powder kind of judge things up and make sure things are increasing but I don't want to do all that extra work especially if I'm out and about therefore great for initial application not a go for reapplication but this one I did find was a little bit worse in the facial hair area and the hairline in terms of how it clung so this is just one i have to be a little bit more careful about but considering protection factor of this this is a really nice elegant option considering the uva and uvb protection you're getting out of this and the fact that it just sits really nicely on the skin but let me see what danielle has to say now with the 50 i did not notice a difference in the texture or the performance with the 50 versus the 30. the 50 still had that same creamy texture didn't prefer it for my face i tried it on my face didn't prefer it i would definitely say that something better for my body body again you know with me it's a texture thing both the 30 and the 50 though i would say worked really well when i went to the gym i mean i only worked out for half an hour but you know i was working out uh, but i did appreciate how the sunscreen held up you know while i was working out and then next i have their uv face fluid spf 50 and i think this is arguably the star of the show a like milky sunscreen version compared to like the more lotion cream textures of the other two i just talked about this is spf 50 with a uva five star rating with the booth star system specifically with a uva pf of 54 so very high with that as well this one again super lightweight super elegant texture that's designated more for oily skin types i think they realized the other two were really moisturizing so they needed something that's a little bit more lightweight a little bit more elegant for those individuals who didn't want so much rich emolliency on the face and so they came out with this one filters for this you have avobenzone octosalate octocrylene nano titanium dioxide and sulazol juvenile t150 as well as tinosorb a2b nano as well and then you also have niacinamide in this the other two in the tubes are a very simple formulation they just have like some humectants and the filters this one does have niacinamide which i think is going to be helpful with some of that sebum production as well as tocopherol acetate so getting a little bit of a antioxidant kick some of the humectants as well glycerin and panthenol this one you tell specifically for nine pounds so it's not as affordable as the other ones but nine pounds this is 50 mil and arguably very very elegant texture really nice formulation to me this is still on the affordable end of things especially if you're here in the uk this one's bomb you can see on the skin the supplies like a dream so lightweight just melt in right away makeup as a result applies beautifully on top of it in terms of reapplication over makeup this was my favorite but it still wasn't the best out of the three just because again you do have those nano particles in there of those hybrid filters anytime those are involved in a formulation reapplication can kind of get really hard because to me those pigments tend to sit on top of the makeup and just reflect more so I don't know if that's in contrast to the pigments in the foundation or what, but it just looks really chromey. doesn't look the most elegant, but out of the three of the ones I've talked about so far, this was the better one. Definitely going to play around with how I reapply this just because that in itself is a factor. You can see on camera with the reapplication, it looks okay, but it doesn't look amazing. That being said, this by itself, no makeup underneath it reapplied, I think is a better option. And I think is what I'm going to reach for just because it's a very elegant texture. I do love the way this sits on the skin and looks on the skin. And more so, I think even if I were to do a base layer with the other two I talked about, the two in the tube, this is the one I'd reach for for reapplication regardless because it's such a lightweight texture that I feel like this reapplied 
two, three times throughout the day isn't going to necessarily compound the richer moisturizing texture that the other two give you, and therefore you won't be as greasy. So again, favorite out of all the ones I've tried so far, definitely what I'm gonna be reaching for during the summer, but let me see what Danielle has to say. I'd have to say out of all four, face fluid is definitely my favorite. I have oily skin. I do like a lightweight texture when it comes to my facial sunscreens. So this one definitely hit the mark there with it being lightweight. It was easy to blend in. I didn't notice any white cast. I would say it has maybe like a satin matte finish, which is usually what I tend to look for when it comes to a sunscreen, but definitely like this one. And then for the last sunscreen option, this is their anti redness and Pigmentation SPF. 50. This, as you can see, it's in green packaging. What this is intended to do is color correct and neutralize redness and some discoloration issues on the skin, while also offering you some free radical protection in the form of iron oxides. And this does also have a few ingredients that are meant to calm and soothe the skin as well. It looks like calendula and centella, some of my favorite ingredients, are in this as well. This retails for £12.50, so it's priciest out of all four of these. Depending on how you want to use this and look at it, it's not that expensive still, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Looking at the filters, this does have abobenzone, octosalate, titanium dioxide, octocrylene, and sulazol. It also has tenosorb S, tenosorb A2B, and eubinol T150. And I do want to know specifically this one has titanium dioxide regular and nanoparticles as well. In terms of my application experience with this, it was interesting. So as you can see, this comes out of the packaging green. If you don't know, green color corrects or neutralizes red on the face. So a lot of times if you have redness on the face, you use something green in a very, very light layer to kind of cancel that coloring out. So you have a lot more of a neutral canvas to to work with. The minute you massage it into your skin though, that changes. So it goes from green to kind of like a mid-tier, like mid-brown color, like a very like my skin tone color. And my thought was, oh, this is one of those transforming sunscreen textures where it's like you rub it into your skin and it like melts into your natural skin color. It works on my skin. It works okay. My thing with this is just, it's a very richly emollient texture, more so than the other few I've talked about. This one is radiant. The pigment on this isn't very, very sheer in my opinion. This is actually like a very considerably like light to medium coverage pigment, especially if you put on the proper amount you need to get the protection on this. And I was like, oh, okay, this is an experience. So after I place on the face, you can see it kind of works on my skin, working in all over. I look very, very uniformly like flat in color and very radiant. And after that, I was like, I'm not gonna do much more in terms of makeup. I'm gonna set this down. I might color correct, do some bronzer, but this is the makeup I'm wearing for today. And with that, this isn't my favorite. I think this is my least favorite out of all four of them. I didn't have the best experience. I know Danielle specifically had her own opinions. So let's hear what she has to say. Now this anti-redness <laughs> and pigmentation one caught my eye. I was very interested in this because I was like, oh wow, it, you know, anti-pigmentation. But then I was also like, wait, how is this addressing redness and pigmentation? Because typically you see redness in people with lighter skin tones. Not to say that people with deeper skin tones don't have that type of response in their skin, but I was just like, how are they gonna address this for both? And it's a little tricky. So the cast is very, <laughs> aggressive. Now, once you rub it in, you're going to need some time to rub it in thoroughly into the skin so it doesn't look as bad. It's definitely not perfect. It does tend to turn into like a light brown color, but it's still not the best kind of color or tint for someone with a deeper skin tone like mine. This would not be my first choice, but if you are looking for a visible light protection, maybe a lighter skin tone, or maybe you're a deeper skin tone, you don't mind putting makeup on top of it, this might be an option for you. So yeah, as you can see, this she had a whole different experience and that's why I sent this to her. This is the one I was most excited to hear about just because this is one where I wanted to know, does it meld into deeper skin tones? Was it gonna look like? And plus, once you reach a certain like complexion, you don't see redness as readily on the face. So I wanted to know what that green would do. And is this at any point beneficial to deeper skin tones? So clearly this is a no-go, not a good option necessarily. Here's where I feel this works well. In a very, very light sheer layer on top of something else, in order to cancel out redness, I see this doing very, very well. You're not using a lot of the product, therefore you're not getting a crazy pigment payoff or a crazy kick of that emolliency. It's just lightly camouflaging some redness. So you can go on top of it, let's say, after you go with the SPF 30, use a little dab of this to neutralize some redness, call it a day. Or if you're my complexion area, mid, medium to tannish, and you have a little bit of a white cast situation going on, this on top could be good as well. What I will say, this is SPF 50. You do get five star UVA protection with the star system. It doesn't actually clearly designate anywhere a UVA PF rating, but I assume it's still fairly high. But in that regard still, it's something I would want to use light touches of in more of a spot concealing way on top of another sunscreen, because to me, I can't use this by myself on my entire face 
base because it doesn't work with my skin tone necessarily or my skin type at all. But that's why I say the price is a little bit more justifiable just because if you're using this a little bit here and there on top of other sunscreens, it's one of those things where it's like comparable to a affordable mid-tier foundation. So overall, my thoughts on Altruist sunscreens, I think they are a win. I think they are a hit, hands down, or recommended, just due to the fact that they are a very well-formulated, very high photoprotective value product at a very affordable price. Again, you got, what, four pound 50, four pound eight, what was it, eight or nine pound for the fluid. Very accessible pricing, great protection. Overall, I see a lot of great things with this brand and definitely is worth checking out. Again, this is EU based, based here in London, super easy and accessible to get. But if you're in the US, I believe try ordering off UK Amazon. I've heard decent things in terms of ordering from, you know, international versions of Amazon to get to your home country. But I do also have links that I use to access this from non-Amazon based retailers that might ship internationally. And again, huge shout out to Style and Beauty Doctor Danielle. Thank you so much for collaborating with me and for providing me your thoughts and opinions on the products as you tried them out. Go check out her own review video of the sunscreens that's gonna be in the description box. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.